All right, so we're going to talk now about stopping the cash flow of crunch. How many people here know somebody who's got a lot of debts? There's got to be somebody. Okay. A lot of debts? Okay. So what, one of the things that happens when people have a lot of debt is they cumulatively have a lot of payments. So they've got a payment for this, a payment for that, and they've got all these multiple payments coming out. And usually they're either combinations of lines of credits, there's car loans, there's credit cards, all of those things. And until you actually sit people down, and I've had this happen many times where we've sat people down and said, do you know how much you're shelling out a month? And they don't really have a clue. When you sit them down and you actually break out the math, they go, oh my gosh, no wonder I got no money every month. Yeah. Or they're doing the old robbing Peter to pay Paul. They take one credit card to help pay for another credit card, or they move it from another credit card to another line of credit, and it's a constant juggle. I had a client in now, I don't know if any of you look at your statements that you get from the bank, typically these days, but the credit card statements and the lines of credit statements now tell you how many years it actually would take you to pay it out. They have to disclose that now. If you pay attention, I had a client in not too long ago, that statement said it would take them 67 years to pay out their credit card balance. They didn't realize that because they kept making the minimum payments. So it's those sorts of situations that this would be really handy for. And again, we can look at taking advantage of today's rate. So if you had a client who had a 350, so back to another example, you got to the back on this one. So this is the top front page of the sheet. If we look at the example on the back, We've got somebody who's got a $350,000 mor uh, mortgage right now, let's say 3.09%, which was a pretty normal rate a few years ago. Payments are $1,489. They've also got a $25,000 unsecured line of credit, let's say it's 6%. Payments are $125, just interest. Credit cards of $25,000 and 15%, $315, just interest. Auto payments of $20,000 and $4.9, $376. Now, some people might say, well, $20,000 on an auto loan is a fair amount. We were just dealing with a client the other day who had an 80, basically $80,000 auto loan. So it's not uncommon, and payments are like $1,200 a month. They've got a second auto loan because both the husband and wife have a car. Let's say it's $288,000. Their combined debt load is $435,000 in this example, and their payments are $2,593 a month. We've got a 30-year amortization. Now, if we re-switched everything around for these folks, we could take basically a new mortgage of 435 at 2.59 and bring their amortization down to 18 years. So we could take 12 years off their mortgage and their payments would essentially be $74 less than what they're paying now for everything combined. Now people, again, you would think that if everybody knew that, they would all be doing that. But it's the same old thing. You get busy with what you do, you never really pay attention to the statements, and you just get used to making the payments. So if, you, if you're in that situation yourself, and you know somebody like that, have them give us a call. It's one of those things, and the other thing that unfortunately that happens with all of this, the more debt you're carrying, the lower your credit score keeps getting. Credit score keeps getting lower, the harder it is to get better terms, and you get into this vicious cycle. And again, this example, we were able to do that. If the folks wanted a 25-year amortization, their payments would be $19.68. They could essentially have $625 more a month in improved cash flow. Now, I'll give you a trick question. That's $625 extra, what could they do with it? I don't know. What would they do with it, huh? They'd buy another car. <laughs> They, unfortunately, they probably would go to Las Vegas. That's, they probably would do that too, but what I would encourage them to do is put it into their RSPs. Because what will they get? The refund. The refund which they can dump back against their mortgage, which will effectively help reduce that. Now, you, instead of a vicious cycle, you've got a good cycle. Things that are working in your favor. And you know, the 